Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor. Flying cameras, ghost cameras have been around for the longest time. I remember them back from Halo 3 with a forge mode and I loved flying around as the little camera. So today I wanted to show you something with Unity's newer input system. There's various solutions on the asset store, even a free one, which is the free fly cam, which is great, but it uses the older system. You can use that if you go to edit, preferences, and make sure you enable both of the input settings. But I'm gonna show you how to do it with the new system today so you can fly around your scene and make it so much easier for you to navigate. If you've got any improvements, do let me know because I'm always looking to make this the best it can be. I'll put this on my Patreon and you can get also over 225 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Do check out all of Unity's great sales on the Unity Asset Store and I'll put the links down below to everything. And I've got a camera already, which is a normal Unity camera. You can right click and choose a camera that you want to create. You do need to make sure I am using Unity 6, so the newer input actions are installed. But if it's not already installed or you're using a previous version of Unity, you want to go to Unity Registry and just type in input and make sure you have installed the input system. I do actually have a full hour tutorial showing you all the different elements of the input system along with creating character controllers, controller support and loads of different stuff that you need to know and you can check that out if you're interested and I'll put it in the description. But what we'll do is we'll get started out by right clicking, going create and choosing input actions. I'm just going to call this input actions fly cam just as an example for this i'm going to open this out in here and then you'll have an action map we need to call it this could be something like player but i'm just going to name this fly cam for this and we need a bunch of actions now if there's another input actions asset in your project you can copy it and right click the actions that you would want so as part of this project the fantasy kingdom it did come with the input settings action and if you open that up you can see that player already has a bunch of settings you can copy that entire action map if you want if you don't want to create something yourself but we do need to make some slight changes first of all we need a brand new action and this is going to be an action to move so it's going to be using wasd to move around in our scene at the very first part of call and then if we've called this move we need to make sure the action type is a value and then we're just going to give this a value of vector 2 and then if we press the little plus, we want to add a new binding and it's going to be an up, down, left, right composite. You can see that it's a vector two, and I'm just going to rename this to WASD. Up will be W on my keyboard. Down will be S on the keyboard. Left will be A on the keyboard and right will be D on the keyboard. And you can add different bindings if you want other things to be able to use it like a controller. Now I'm going to have a brand new binding, which is going to be look in this case and look is also going to be a value and a vector two and then on the binding which has already been created we're just going to have mouse and we're going to have the mouse delta so it was just the mouse pointer to be able to look around we'll have two one for move up and one for move down because we'll use the e and q keys to go up and down so in this case these can be left as button and i'm just going to have this as the e key and then what i'm going to do is right click and i'm going to duplicate that key and I'm just going to rename this to move down, reset the binding, find the path, press Q and add that in here. Then we're going to have one called boost, which is almost could be like sprinting. That can be on button. We can have a new binding, find the path, listen, and we can press shift. And we'll have left shift on the keyboard. We'll have one new binding. And I'm just going to have this as left click hold because I want to be able to left click to hold to actually move the camera around in my case rather than just being able to look. So if we go on the last binding, I'm going to make sure that I go to mouse and I'm just going to go and do the left button in this case. Now we'll make sure that we save the asset at the top, make sure it's always saved. You can have auto save as enabled. With the input actions, I'm just gonna assign this to my project wide input actions and I'm going to generate a C sharp class to be able to use it in my script. And you can see that it's created a new C sharp script, which is my input actions fly cam and you can see it all here. We'll create a brand new C sharp script. We'll create and we'll go to scripting and we'll go to empty C sharp. What we'll do is then open this script up. We'll need to use a namespace at the top called unity engine dot input system. Then we're going to have movement speeds, which are going to be three floats for normal, boosted and vertical speed. And then we're going to have some mouse settings for the look sensitivity and whether we want to invert the Y axis. So now we'll say void on enable because we want to be able to use the things from the input system to be able to detect when we've moved or any performed any particular action. 
So we need to go back up to our variables. We need to create a new private variable and call that our input actions flycam. And we're just going to set that to lowercase input actions. Then in our non neighbor method, we need to be able to reference this. So we'll say that input actions equals new input actions flycam, just as we'd found above. And then we need to specify the input actions dot enable to be able to find that C sharp class or to create a copy of it. And now we're going to make sure that we find all performed and canceled events just so that we can detect when these happen on enable. So I'll give you an example. So we'll say input actions dot. We want the fly cam, which is the action map and then the actual action name itself. So in, in this case, it was move and then we'll say dot performed and then plus equals on move. And we're going to create our own method for all of these to detect when these happen. And then exactly the same, we're going to make sure that we copy that exact line, paste that in below and just say dot cancelled. We also need to make sure we've got an on disable method, which just means that we have our input actions. We need to make sure that we disable them when they're not required. And like I said, we wanted to create a method to be able to make this work. So we'll say public void on move, open the brackets. Then we're going to have this as a generic input action dot the callback context. And we'll just have this as context because this is based on that C sharp class we've created. And you can see now that the on move has changed because we've got this method, which can realize and take account of when it's performed or canceled. Now we need to hold what sort of move input and what direction we're going to move in. So just under here, I'm going to have a brand new private vector to and the move input. So we can detect whether we're going to move up or down at any point. So on the on move, you'll be able to say that move input is equal to the context dot read value and then in angle brackets we'll have vector two with two brackets and then close that up so our move input will always be updated if we're doing this action which is called move and like i said we needed to create one for each of the actions that we have so on look on move up on move down on boost and on left click we need to detect whether we have the input action of the input map the particular action whether we've performed or we've cancelled that and then we need a method for each of these which do almost the same thing so you'll see i have a method called on look and have the same callback context and we read the same read value vector 2. we do need a variable at the top which is vector 2 look input to reference that and we've added it in below so i'm going to have one for on boost and on left click hold and we wanted to see if we were boosting or we were looking at any point. So we have the context for whether they're performed or not. So I'm going to have another two private bools, which is boosting and is looking. And then you can see that they'll be able to find whether or not you're pressing the key or not. Now, in between, I want something called on move up, which is also using the callback context. I've created an on move up method and we're looking for a vertical movement to see whether it's performed. And then we should be up or nothing at all if we're not moving up. So I'm creating a brand new variable, which is a vector three for the vertical movement. Similar like before, we've got on move down. And if it's been performed, we'll be moving down. If not, we'll be just moving nowhere. We won't be going up or down. Then what we're going to do is create an update method. If we are looking around, so holding that left click, we're going to want to create a method called look around. And then if anything else, we'll just have another method called move camera. So you see, we're going to take, a, we're going to create this method and we'll say void move camera and we'll start by saying we'll have a float which is speed set that equal to whether we're boosting or not have a question mark of the boosted speed so if we're actually clicking the button we're going to be boosting if not we'll just be the normal speed then what we need to do is to have the forward and backwards or left and right movement that we're going to create so we'll have a vector three and have this for our forward movement set that equal to vector three dot normalize because we want to normalize the speed so we can't go above or beyond if we say we're pressing multiple buttons we'll tr say transform dot forward times by the move input dot y which is the times by speed times by time dot delta time and then we'll do the same for the movement for left and right so we'll say vector three right movement is equal to vector three dot normalize dot transform dot right times by move input dot x times by speed times time dot delta time and then the last thing we need to apply that to our movement we'll say that transform dot position plus equals the forward movement plus the right movement plus in brackets the vertical movement times by the vertical speed times by time dot 
delta time. Then we'll be able to control moving up and down and changing the position based on what things we pressed. So if we go back into Unity, and I'm just going to add the script here and you can see that I've got normal, boosted speed, vertical speed, and I've got a look sensitivity. Now you can see we can move W to move up, S to move back, left with A and right with D, and we can use E to go up and Q to go down. And we can combine the, all of these together to be able to move around and use different things. Now we want to be able to look around. So I did want to create a new method to be able to do this. So I'll have void look around because I want to only do that when I hold the left click because I want that to really work properly. So what I'm going to do is create local variables for mouse X and set that equal to the look input dot X times by the look sensitivity. Now we can do this by times in it by dot delta time because you want to make it frame rate independent. But this time I'm just using it so we can make the values smaller, but just test that if it's suitable for your game or not. Then we're going to have mouse Y set that equal to the look input dot Y times by the look sensitivity. And then I'll also times that by in brackets, the invert Y option, have a question mark and set that to minus one colon one. And then that I did spell look input wrong. So the invert Y just means that we will do the opposite of it, which is minus one. In any other case, if it's not set with a Boolean, we'll do the correct way that we expect. Now what to do is create an X and a Y rotation just so we can limit that. So we can actually accidentally steer the camera in a direction that we didn't expect it to go. So I'm going to say that the Y rotation plus equals mouse X. This is just so that we can make sure the horizontal for left and right rotation ends up staying the same. So for the X rotation, we need to do something similar. But we'll set that equal to a clamp so we can end up going in a strange direction for up and down. So we'll math f dot clamp x rotation, but in this case we'll do the x rotation minus the mouse y, comma, minus 90f, comma, 90f, and add that. So it subtracts the y to make sure the inversion is correct. So then we'll do this for transform dot local rotation is equal to quaternion dot Euler, open brackets, X rotation, Y row, comma, Y rotation, comma, zero, and we'll end that so that we make sure that we limit that and make sure we always get that right with our rotations. You may want to add in your awake method vector three for the initial rotation, just to make sure that we're always looking in the rotation that we start and the X and Y rotation can both equal that initial rotation dot X and dot Y. So now we can press play, move around as we wanted to. Now, if I left click, I can maneuver my camera and actually travel in the direction that I want while moving up and down, whilst zooming, whilst doing whatever we want. And we can make this fly around. We may want to decrease the sensitivity slightly because it's really sensitive. If you do have any issues with it feeling unresponsive or a little bit difficult, you can make sure that you go to the look and you can add a processor here and add a stick dead zone and you can actually set the dead zone, the min dead zone to a slightly higher amount if you're having any sort of distortion with it. So I've set my sensitivity a little bit lower so I can now move around freely and look around my level nice and easily exactly as I wanted to, to be able to create a really nice little free look camera to be able to look around as a ghost camera that you would in games that you've used. So I do hope you find this useful and I'll add this to my Patreon. And if you want to improve it, take it, improve it right down in the comments. If you have a good way to optimize or anything that I've missed, because I don't do everything perfectly. Do be sure to come and check out my Patreon to get access to over 225 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. And do check out all the sales and everything going on on the Unity Asset Store at the moment for massive savings. Big thank you to all my patrons. Special thank you to Peter Steiner, Very Shooter and Jennifer for their amazing support.